Hello and welcome to Spark Screencast number four, Standalone Jobs in Scala and Java. In the previous screencast, we covered RDD operations such as the actions count and collect, which return values, and transformations such as map, filter, and flat map, which return a pointer to a new RDD object. We also discussed caching operations where the data is cached in memory for future access. Okay, let's get started. Using your web browser, navigate to spark-project.org. Then choose the documentation link. Now choose the version of Spark that you have downloaded and built. If you have not done this yet, watch screencast number one now to learn how. I'm going to choose Spark 0.7.3, which is the latest release. I'm going to hover over Programming Guides and choose Quick Start, then a standalone job in Scala to quickly skip down the page. Now say we wanted to write a standalone job using the Spark API. We will walk through a simple job in both Scala with SBT, Simple Build jo uh, Tool, and Java with Maven. If you are using another build system, consider using the Spark assembly jar described in the developer guide. We'll create a very simple Spark job in Scala, so simple in fact that it's named simplejob.scala. This job simply counts the number of lines containing A and the number containing B in a system log file, unlike the earlier examples with the Spark shell, which initializes its own Spark context we initialize the Spark context as part of the job. We pass the Spark context constructor four arguments. The type of scheduler we want to use, in this case, a local scheduler, a name for the job, the directory where Spark is installed, and the name for the jar file containing the job sources. The final two arguments are needed in a distributed setting, where Spark is running across several nodes, so we include them for completeness. Spark will automatically ship the jar files you list to slave nodes. Now let's go ahead and copy and paste simplejob.scala into a file. After importing and instantiating the new Spark context, the first job will be to use the function text file to read in log file, which is defined as var log syslog. This function text file will return an RDD of strings. Let's look and see uh, how we can find out more about the function text file. We'll open up another tab. We'll click on documentation. We'll choose the latest re release. We'll hover over API docs, Spark Java Scala Scala doc. And now we'll look in the left hand pane and find Spark. We'll move down and find Spark context and click it. And now we'll enter text file, the name of the function, and we'll see a short description of what the function does, as well as the input parameters and the fact that it uh, returns an RDD of strings. Okay, so let's go back to the program and we will see next that the filter uh, transformation is applied to the RDD of strings pointed to by log data and that for every line in the RDD we'll apply the function line contains the string A. If this function evaluates to true then the filter will keep that line in the new RDD. Then at the end of the line, we can see that we apply the action count. This means that we'll count the number of lines that evaluate to true and store it in number of A's. The same process will be applied to number of B's for lines that contain B. Then we print it out to the console. SimpleJob.Scala depends on the Spark API, so we'll also include an SPT configuration file, simple.spt, which explains that Spark is a dependency. 
This file also adds two repositories, which host Spark dependencies. Let's go ahead and copy the configuration into the configuration file simple.spt. So we can see a name, a version, the Scala version, library dependencies, and then resolvers such as the Aka repository and Spray repository for the library dependency Spark-Core. Of course, for SPT to work correctly, we'll need to lay out simplejob.scala and simple.spt according to the typical directory structure. Once that is in place, we can create a jar package containing the job's code, then use SPT run to execute our job. Let's go ahead and make the directory. Let's go ahead and run SPT package. This will take a little bit of time. We'll go ahead and skip ahead. And it was successful. Let's go ahead and run. SPT run. It was successful. We have 218 lines with A and 183 lines with B. So it checks out. We have 218 lines with A and 183 lines with B. This example only runs the job locally. For a tutorial on running jobs across several machines, see the standalone mode documentation and consider using a distributed import source such as HDFS. That's it. You've seen how to run simplejob.scala as a local job on a single machine. Enjoy Spark!